So about two students, let's do our day three homework video where we are adding fractions together, making sure we have a common denominator. So that's the key to adding and subtracting fractions is a common denominator. Okay, start with using just numbers. So we remember like one eighth plus four eighths is how we can add our eighths together to get five eighths. And then we start using X's. And the key is if you have a common denominator, you just keep your denominator, that's common. You just add your numerator together. You may look to simplify this and like factor this and maybe cancel after that. But usually after this first step of just adding together, you're, you're done. So pay attention to your denominator. If your denominator is common, you just add your numerators together. I like to always change subtraction into uh, add the opposite or using parentheses to help. Combine your like terms, 5x plus 1 over 4x minus 1. You're not allowed to simplify this. You're not allowed to cross off x's because of the pluses and the minuses in between. You'd have to turn things into products and cancel entire terms. Now with the subtraction, you can either write this out using two steps or one. I like to use a, a parenthesis so I know I distribute this negative. I'm subtracting 5x and I'm subtracting 3. So it's like 3x minus 5x, negative 4 minus 3, or distribute that negative. So it's 3x plus negative 5x and negative 4 plus negative 3. Use your calculator to help you with the calculations if you're unsure, and you get that. Now, if you have x's in the bottom, you don't have a common denominator, you need one. Sometimes you can multiply by the other's denominator, or you can just like pay attention to you know, what would be the easiest denominator to get. Like 30x, 30x, so not multiplying by 6x and 5x, but just like 6 and 5 would do that. I'll use my calculator here. 12 times 6 is what, 72? Seven times five is 35, so I have 72 minus 35, and now I have a common denominator, 30x. 72 minus 35 is, uh, what, 37? So 37, 30s, x's. Okay, this is close to being a common denominator, I just need to give this a four and this a three, and I'll have 12x squared. Kind of just like thinking about what would be what's essentially called a least common multiple. Then we can add 32 and 15 is 47, 12x squared. You can look to try to simplify this, divide the top and bottom by a number. There's nothing I can uh, divide and multiply. Okay. Now we have x pluses or x minuses in the denominator. The easiest common, common denominator you can get is using the other's denominator. So multiplying this by x minus 3 over x minus 3, multiplying this by x plus 4 over x uh, plus 4. But when we do that, we want to leave the denominator like kind of in the factored form. It helps us when we're solving or figuring out when the denominator equals 0. But we do want to distribute the numbers on the top. 2x plus negative 6, 3x plus 12. And then we can combine, look to factor and simplify if it's possible. 5x plus 6, x plus 3, x plus, x minus 3, x plus 4. If I could factor something out of the top, I would. Try to cancel, I don't. Here, x plus 4, x plus 4, x minus 1, x minus 1. So the common denominator is x plus 4 times x minus 1. Distribute this, 2x plus 8. Now be careful. I'm going to be subtracting this. So either we need to subtract 5x minus 5, or what I like to do is distribute the negative to just the top. It's not the top and the bottom, because then you'd be giving it two negatives. It makes this entire fraction negative. And then distribute the negative 5x to the x and the negative 1. Your common denominator, combine your like terms in the numerator.
same thing here, but the uh, common denominator would have to be 5 times x plus 2. So I get 5x and I have 3x plus 6. I have 5 times x plus 2. We don't like to distribute in the denominator. We just like it to be common. So that's good. This is 8x plus 6 over 5x plus 2. If you have a whole number, make it over a 1. Give it the other's denominator, and we have a common denominator. So I have 2. Now, I like to distribute this and make this a negative 4. So this is negative 4x plus 12 when I distribute the negative 4. That is divided by x minus 3. The 12 and the 2 is 14. And if anything, you could pull out maybe a negative 2 or a positive 2. But there's no simplification that we could do after that. Okay, same deal here. Let's distribute the top. I get x squared minus 2x plus 3x plus 3. Yeah, x minus 2 and x plus 1 in the denominator. Leave that. I'll have x squared minus x plus 3. x minus 2, x plus 1. I'd look to factor the numerator, if possible, but there are no two numbers that multiply to get 3 and add to get negative 1. So I'm actually done. There's nothing I can do here. We are completely simplified. Here, x minus 3, x plus 4. Distributing, I get x squared minus 3x. I'm going to distribute the negative. So I get negative 4x squared and negative 16x. x minus 3, x plus 4 is the common denominator. Giving me negative 3x squared minus 19x's. Could pull out an x, maybe a negative 1 if I wanted to. There's no other numbers I could pull out. Look to simplify if it was possible. If you see things in the denominator that could be factored, here is your difference of squares. This is an m squared minus n squared, so this is an m plus n and m minus n. It's important to understand that the common denominator might be easily obtained without multiplying by the other's denominator. This already has an x plus 3. This has an x plus 3 and an x minus 3. I'm going to give this just an x minus 3, and I have a common denominator. So I have 3 plus, this is 2x minus 6 after distributing. This is x plus 3, x minus 3. Giving me 2x minus 3 equals x plus 3, x minus 3. Over here, the denominator can be factored. There are two numbers that multiply to get 3 and add to get 4. They're 3 and, three and 1. So I'm going to write out the one on the left as x plus 3, x plus 1. And all I need to worry about to give this a common denominator is to give this term an x plus 3. Distributing, I get 4x plus 12 minus 3x or plus negative 3x over the common denominator x plus 3, x plus 1. And then simplifying, I get 1x plus 12 over x plus 3, x plus 1. Now, pay attention, because like on your quizzes, on your tests, these things come at random. No longer do we have a add or a subtract. We have an equals. When we're solving, it's different. You don't need a common denominator to solve. We can just cross-multiply. 8 times x minus 1, 2 times 3x minus 2. Solve this equation. It is different. It is something that you need to just recognize, be ready to adjust and adapt to, to get our answer fairly easily. 
9x plus 18 equals 12x. I have more x's on this right side, so I'm going to subtract 9x's from that side. I get 18 equals 3x, divide by 3, divide by 3, x equals 6. It's not a common denominator that I need. It's just essentially cross-multiplying. Now, cross-multiplying comes from multiplying both sides just by the denominator, not by, the, like, we don't have to worry about, like, x minus 2 over x minus 2. We'll just like multiply this by x minus 4 and x minus 2. What ends up happening is we cross multiply. Gets rid of the denominators, just puts everything up in the top. We distribute when we multiply, and then we solve. Careful, sometimes when solving equations where x's end up on both sides, we get no solutions. It doesn't occur in this situation, but it could occur. Now this is interesting. This can't be a solution. Why did I notice this? Uh, let's make sure I did this right. 2x plus 4, 4x plus 8. Yeah, yeah. So um, so I get x equals negative 2. I think that's the answer. But look back in the original equation. x can't equal negative 2. It's just like a thing to make sure you keep an eye on when solving these equations is like we're not allowed to divide by zero, so that's bad. There are situations where we could have like a, a, a fake solution. This is like an extraneous solution. Uh, we've had extraneous solutions in the last couple of units. It's when it doesn't actually work in the original equation even though we think it does. And sometimes when we solve equations, when we move everything up, that, that occurs. So there's no solutions here. Don't think we'd give that to you on a quiz or a test. It's just something to think about when you're doing math problems. Always like kind of check back and make sure it works. Like seven minus two is five, five over five is one. 7 minus 4 is 3, 3 over 3 is 1. So that like works, x equals 7 works. If I plug in negative 2, I get 2 over 0. I don't know what that is, that you can't do that. I get 4 over 0, I don't know what that is, you can't do that. This is a no solution type thing. So no solution in your notes showed up as like a number equals 0, where the x's go away. Here a no sh solution shows up when like x equals a number, but that number made the denominator 0. Just keep your eye out, but the, the key thing is the previous questions where we cross multiply because we're solving. We're not simplifying. Okay, we're not adding, we're not subtracting, we are solving. All right, that's it. Good luck out there.